God damn right. How are you tonight? <laughs> Harmontown is now in session. Let them hear you at home. <laughs> Make them jealous, though. We're so glad you're here. Welcome to the Dynasty Typewriter. Thank you so much for coming all the way downtown. Let me bring to the stage someone you know and love, Spencer Crittenden! He's no joke. Game master extraordinaire. Coming back from his sold out all over the city tour, from place to place, but mostly his couch, the mayor of Harmontown, Dan Harmon! My name's yeah. Brandon Johnson. Yeah. Have a good night. Yeah. Yeah. Hip. Yo. Hip. Yo. Hop. Yo. Yo. Hip. Hop. Got the rhythm. Got the soul. Yeah. Got your mama's pussy in a bowl. I poured it like cereal. And now I'm going out to rock and roll. Ooh, oops. I fucked your daddy too. Gender equality. What you gonna do? Here's some gender fluidity. I fucked your sister, even though next week she's gonna be a mister. The family tree! <sighs> so that was my pitch for gender equality, but it turned into like a classic, like kind of tranny joke from the 90s. You played yourself! Uh, <laughs> I think everybody should be able to say whatever the fuck they, whoever they are. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to this uh, book on tape, Sapiens. Uh, okay. Let me, uh, thank you. I, I'm assuming that was for the author, and he can't be here. Or just Homo sapiens. Right, that's what I thought. Well, that's, a, that's the interesting thing. Like, I, I was kind of afraid to go get back into anthropology, because I think the, like, the last book I read on anthropology was like a 1967 book, The Naked Ape by Desmond Morris, and I think like, I've always been kind of an armchair anthropology fan, but... That's different from being passionate about anthropology because those people read stuff and learn stuff. But the thing is, anthropology is like a real loaded gun. Like, yeah. like, like it, 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 it's just filled with like the can just says flavor. It doesn't say what flavor. Like, yeah. it, it's, <laughs> it, it may not comfort you. Like an anthropologist may say things like this guy at one point is riffing and just says like. Well, actually, brain size has decreased since the days of foraging because humanity's ability to create culture made room for an imbecile class. I, and you're just like, whoa, what the, f <laughs> what? I, and, I mean, it's, a, and it's, a, it's like, a, you know, like, whoa, loaded gun, yeah. baby. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you made some things like, like when we, before we were agrarian and when every single person, like, like basically when you couldn't, Everyone was just running around like, oh, there's a mushroom. I guess I'll live for another hour. There's a, <laughs> there's a frog. There's a, there's, a, there's a piece of bacon. I don't know how bacon works. Um, it must come from some plant or something, right? Um, uh -oh. for, foraging gives you all this nutritional variety, and it, like, it, it also demands this incredible versatility in your brain. And so there's, like, he was talking about how this idea of, like, look, if you're... It, like, like, the whole, the whole book, I haven't fit, even scratched the surface yet, but the book seems to start to tell the story of how, all right, what is it that made human beings, like, ravage the earth? Like, like why are we the, uh, the human species, of which there are at least, like, six or so that have walked the earth, many of whom at the same time, like Homo erectus, Neanderthals, all that stuff. You've heard of that before. Yes. Like, 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 like we're... we're, we're <laughs> We're, we're not only, co we're cousins with gorillas and chimps and orangutans, but we're, we, we have siblings that are gone and their blood is on our hands. Like, like, yeah. they, and that's actually weird. There's a million kinds of fox, there's a million kinds of bear. There's only one kind of human, and it's not because <laughs> they all don't work. Like, there's room for a lot of kind of bear, and it's like, oh, like one species of human, Homo sapien, as opposed to Homo erectus, which I always thought was like, I always thought there was like that, you know, I thought lineage. Neanderthals died out because they were dumb. But they're not, I mean, they were dumb in certain ways. I That's think the thing. that we used to think that they didn't simultaneously exist on the earth, and that, change, that understanding has changed such that we think that probably three or four were kind of hanging out at the same time, right? But there, was a, there, was, there was at least a half a dozen right. um, yeah. uh, 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 homo, uh, 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 human, human right. species. Which is new um, So you have Homo erectus is a completely different species from us. I, I like Homo habilis. Um, 
Uh, <laughs> they first of all use the example of like horses and donkeys. So yeah. horses and donkeys are separate species, but they can mate. So they, they, you know, they talk about well, we we may have mated with Neanderthals. Like like there's a, yeah. like that idea of you have one percent Neanderthal in your genes and stuff. It, 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 but horses don't really donkeys and horses. They're not. It's not the first thing that would come into their head if you put them in a pen together. Yeah. <laughs> you have to get aggressive about suggesting that they do it, <laughs> and, or, or, or the or the horse has to be have you know have issues that right. demand that it's more about anger than I don't know what. But <laughs> and ultimately they produce an offspring that's not even fertile. And then you take like, but that's different from like. Like, like, there's a million kinds of dog, but they're all the same species because they happily, like, you put them in a room together, you go away, you have a popsicle, you come back, you got fucking weird ass boxer, <laughs> fucking shaped like a slinky. Um, we, 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 ha we, we walked this earth like uh, with, with all these different, like, specialized brands of human. Uh, Homo erectus was like really good at making tools, so good at making tools that that's all they fucking did. It was in their genes to make tools. The way when you throw a ball, your golden retriever like knows how to do something better than like maybe your mutt or your or 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 like a bull or like a Jack Russell who's like, well, that's not a mouse, so I'm going to stare at the electrical outlet um, <laughs> and lick your face until you have no more friends coming over. Um, Jack Russells are the worst, <laughs> but you have to like respect them because you're like you were mentally ill. Uh, like if you know anything about mental illness and you meet a Jack Russell, you ha you, you're you just like, I can't judge you. You're clearly yeah. sick. You yeah. have a sickness that's been bred into you Terrier by class. some person who wanted less rats. That's not yeah. cool. <laughs> the dog is like, they just stare at the corner of a coffee table because they think it might turn into a mouse one day. <laughs> They're insane. Anyways, but, but, uh, <laughs> sorry. But, uh, but, but Homo erectus, like, we, is it like, okay, they made like these flint tools, or they, they, they had these tools, but they actually, like, kind of, like, it was bred into them. They walked the earth for two million years making these dumbass tools. I mean, they never turned that into making tool tools or tool, tool, tool tools, which we are good at. Homo sapiens, the book implies, now I'm, I'm, I'm extrapolating a lot for listening for an hour and a half car ride to this book that's like, <laughs> it's a 15 hour book. Uh, and, and I heard someone wrote it down somewhere and you could, uh, with the eyeballs. <laughs> but, but the implication is that it's like, we're no better or no worse. Like, like it's like, like brain size, whatever. Like, like if, if truly if brain size and like, like, if it was just raw intelligence that, like, made you dominate the Earth, of course, by now, there would have been ants with giant heads. <laughs> like, or he doesn't say that because he's a scientist and you debunk that. <laughs> I, I'm making that up. But there'd be, like, dogs or something that would be, like, like, it would just be, like, the thing that you always go to. We kind of have that mythology in our heads, literally, that, 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 that it's like, oh, it's all about that brain. you got to get to that brain. But the brain is like really hit or miss as an evolutionary trait. It was like just betting double zero on a roulette. Even that's a mis, uh, misconstruer, as I coined it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he said a misconstruer the other day. Really made me misconstrue some stuff. Um, just talk. All right. Um, <laughs> sapiens like are different. So the thing that separated us out. Okay. So get this. This is okay. the, this is the uplifting thing yes. slash biggest bummer in the fucking world. Th this guy implies that the reason why we ended up wiping everybody out, whether that meant fucking them and absorbing them, eat, uh, and or e eating them, um, out hunting them, uh, just 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 making them feel unwelcome until they they deleted their Neanderthal accounts and like went away. <laughs> Uh, because they're like, F I don't like where this is going. Um, if this is what it takes to survive, I'm going to go have a giant brain and live in the pine trees and fucking go to sleep. That's what happened to Homo habilis. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which one is habilis? Is that... They were excellent listeners. <laughs> uh. It was great. It was great. It just didn't win the war. It was a good skill to have at the time. It didn't win a lot of contests. It won a few important contests. Right, but they lost the 
tell me wa- tell right. me more passive aggressive wars of exactly. 30 million BC when the Cro Magnons eventually said, "Go on," and they were like, "I'm out." Yeah. Uh, but uh, the what the, the 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 idea put forth in this book is that what we are good at, all of us, is uh, it's. <laughs> The cynical would call it lying, uh, which is not, it's not unique to us. Uh, primates lie. Um, the, 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 primates uh, lie. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me stop it, you. The, 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 the writers among us, be, if that were interested in justifying our jobs or, or getting through tomorrow with a spring on our step, would say, would call it mythology. That's what we're good at. A, a, a corporate lawyer would call it uh, the ability to handle a contract. Like, essentially, it's all the same thing. Basically, what sapiens are good at uh, that, that, that gets us past the topping out point of primate sophistication, which tops out, as, as all of us who have ever watched a sitcom or hung out in a room this size know, it tops out at 100 primates. Like, your ability to function as a group. Nobody in here, there's no cops in here, but if somebody jumped up and was like, hail Satan! Like, we'd, we'd get confused, and we'd, we'd eventually figure out what to do, but we're probably, it probably won't happen, because there's a hundred of us. If there were a thousand of us, there's going to be ten people going, hail Satan! And they're going to get lost in the... Yeah. They're going to actually be encouraged by the fact that there's a thousand people to, like... And, and also, we're all going to start going, that's someone else's problem. Chaos, chaos. Um, uh, so what we, the, like, the, that's where a Neanderthal can't handle it. Like 500 Neanderthals, they can't do anything. 500 Homo erectus, sapiens perfected the art of, like, we have the lobes in our brain necessary to believe in shit that ain't real. Um, we, we, we're able to, we're able to watch Seinfeld and hear a hundred people and pretend that those hundred people represent a million people and just go, oh, Seinfeld's great even though Seinfeld didn't come over to my house and tell me uh, he, he's going to help me out tomorrow, but I'm, I'm, on, I'm in Seinfeld's corner. Like, Seinfeld's a flag, Seinfeld's a religion, Seinfeld's a meme, Seinfeld's a... It's, it's symbolism. It's, it's this idea that we can create, like, a connectivity between strangers that will never meet each other. Two Serbians um, that will never meet can, can both have been taught from childhood about the importance of, of, of being a Serb mm-hmm. and, and, and identify that with a flag. And, 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 and they'll see the right flag on each other's arm patch and wh- or whatever in the middle of a situation. Somebody, somebody might take a bullet for somebody else. The chimpanzees can't do that. You can't, it's like, like no, no other even human species, all of which are now extinct, can do that. So we basically, <laughs> it's kind of, it's a bummer, a little <laughs> bit of a bummer. This is, what, this is what we're good at. This is why we're here. We're good at this giant mess that we've created. That's what we're good well, at. Are you saying we're the first monkeys with imagination? It's, it's, that's too, too fucking beautiful. That's too poetic. <laughs> I, but, yeah, but yeah, I guess that is. I mean, we're the first, we're the first human species, the first homo, in, in, in the homo genus, mm-hmm. we're, the, we're the ones that, that, that uh, uh, got really good at sharing ideas that never have to be true, that, that, that can be so, things that, that never have to be concretized, but can be the most important thing in the world. Yeah. You, you, the, the ability to wake up in bed and say, because I am blank, mm-hmm. um, a, a member of, 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 a, of, a, of an invisible tribe, a corporation, a country, uh, a, 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 a fandom, a, a, a political leaning, a, a gender, a race, a, 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 a type of person. I'm a qual- because I am a quality of life person, uh, like, like, because I am that, 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 I'm going to do this today. And it will actually supersede things that for other primates and even other human species that are now extinct, like they would be like, I'm not going to harvest corn based on, what did you say? Mickey Mouse exists? I don't yeah. do it. I get, and then they starve. And then the yeah. people that believe in Mickey Mouse come over the hills. And there's, how are they having 800,000 people with spears? I give up. I give up. Take me to jail. Um, we or are, teach me to... Learn about corn, or or if you can reproduce with me, and yeah, I I mean they're done cool, these people, like they're done, like like the the ones that are like their children are being raised in this environment of like of like no, we, we, we it's called culture, it's called mythology, it's called religion, it's called lies, it's called depending on what mood you're in, it's called all kinds of things, but it's basically like the fact that we can sustain a life 
based on nothing, based on no, like, like, and we sometimes get frustrated by that and go like, God damn it, you know, you get in that fight club red pill mood and you go, Jesus Christ, well, this fucking fact is I got a big set of balls full of cum and if I wanted to, I could fuck this fucking whole dollar store into fucking, I could make it all pregnant. Well, you Who could. hasn't said that? <laughs> I mean, you could and you couldn't. You could if you could somehow figure out a way to hack symbology and mythology to reduce all of civilization to a basically non-sapien mindset. Like, you could turn us into animals again. Like, you know, and you, we're the only species that has the power to do that. We have a self-destruct mechanism. And I was thinking that, like, this is like a meditation I've had on murder. Like, the, we can't, like, <laughs> I've had a lot of meditations on murder. I'll be uh, do Homo, so shows. Homo habilis is also famous for that, for uh, <laughs> love suppressing it. their murder meditations. They love suppressing violence. Um, no, but, like, just one of the, the... Humans, obviously, they kill people, but at the same time, like, you can't kill someone and exist in society. So, like, we have to be able to turn people into killers and then also turn them back from killers into normal people who can, like, function in society. Because otherwise, anytime someone would kill, they would become, like, essentially an unhinged zombie monster, you right. know? Like, the fact that you can have the regret is, like, this weird thing. But what that means is that we can, we can use words and ideas to work ourselves into a literally a lethal frenzy that's only a temporary state of hypnosis that renders us capable of doing things we're not normally capable of and wouldn't be capable of if we weren't con conceiving of this construct that we invented in our minds. Yes. And like that is like it's a very human thing but that's like it's very crazy because otherwise you know if that didn't exist then all of society would break down but because that exists like sociopaths exist kind of. I don't know. It's really fucked up and scary. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we all live a lie. I mean, yeah. it's like when you examine currency and you go like, well, the dollar's backed by nothing or whatever. Like, like ev everything is a lie. I right. mean, why are we... Yeah, a anything that goes beyond... A, a, any Charles Manson level, right? Uh, like, like, like. Sometimes that's why I think we're we're fascinated with mob mythology mm -hmm. or cri you know organized crime stuff is because there's a tribal mindset there, right. and it actually things actually start clicking for us when we watch The Sopranos and we go, I get it. Pauly Walnuts can't tell Lieutenant Pecker Pickle what to do. I, <laughs> yes, I, that's I, I, I don't have to have a memory. I I have imagination. Uh, anyways, let's 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 bring out. So we, we, this, that's why tonight's show is all based in anthropology. We've got only the most top qualified experts. <laughs> I've planned this out. The show is meticulously planned and scheduled. I've got the perfect guests. Let's first bring out uh, Coco the gorilla. <laughs> oh, oh, poor Harambe's wife. Too soon. I guess we'll, we'll let's bring out Jeff Davis first. Jeff, Jeff Davis. Davis, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff Davis. Jeff Davis, extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. He could have been anywhere in the world tonight, ladies and gentlemen, but he chose to be here. Right. Jeff Davis. Shrub involved visual bit. Hard to explain. Well, they both did a bit. Like, it made me feel like... It feels like the Milwaukee Public Zoo and you're like waiting for the, the, the lions to come out in the winter. <laughs> Uh, ha, ha. The, 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 you go to the zoo and you're like, how come the lions aren't out? Because you're, are you freezing your ass off? <laughs> they're in the tiny heated room eating yeah. hay. <laughs> but they're lions. That's how cold they are. <laughs> I don't know that I, I would compare these motherfuckers to lions. So. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Davis. <laughs> See? No one's coming See? out now. See? Because a, a lion would have come out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And this is a bluff. I'm happy to call it. All right. <laughs> they picked me on the wrong night, man. I'll do a whole... I know. You do, you do have enough in you, I yeah. feel like, to talk about without these dudes. Yeah. All right. Another thing about those humans and our ability to create murder and stuff... <laughs> I think someone almost just got shot by a microphone accessory. What was that? I, uh, I pulled on the mic cord, and then a piece of plastic shot out and almost hit that dude in the face. Just toss and, it up here. And I will, uh, I will do it again. Ow. <laughs> you ever uh, ask for someone to toss you something and just let it, let it land? Yeah. yeah. It's one of the coolest fucking moves. I'm going to tell you right now that that shit was a preemptive strike. I was like, that dude needs a piece of this microphone. <laughs> Thank you for your help. So much help. 
Uh, Sarcasm, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> yeah, I did a lot you. of driving with Cody. I'll tell you another a book we listened to, uh, another book on tape, Elizabeth Smart's uh, story, Woo! her autobiography. Remember yeah. her? Do you know who Elizabeth yeah. Smart is or are you too young? She was a, a true crime person. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't follow those stories. Well, I don't remember the stories. I follow them like she when they was, happened. I, I remember the story. I can't remember. What, now I can't even remember what year it was when it happened. But I do... I was fascinated by the story because I remember she. The, it became a story because she had returned. It was yeah. like a big thing, and I vaguely remember that the the vagaries and the weird insinuations or questions. It was sort of like I, my consciousness was like, "Oh, is that that girl that got abducted?" <laughs> but she got abducted by a guy that may or may not have. You know, it was like the, the press was like, "Oh, she's back, but she may not have been abducted. Maybe she read." Yeah. It was like it was like there were and it was like so it was really like therapeutic to listen to her uh, her her book because it was like oh god like like ridiculous like the the narrative of yeah of course you're not gonna get that right like yeah. like th th this guy just like came into her room she was 14 years old he's got a fucking Bowie knife and he's like get up and get out of bed and come with me and it's like it's this crazy experiment and like what if you were a good girl and you just didn't like like what if you just didn't want your family to get hurt and what if you just always what if you just kept doing what you thought yeah. was the smartest healthiest spiritual thing to do and the answer is this fucking creep who actually turns out to be like the three stooges of charles manson's like <laughs> it's it's actually kind of a you know if you if you detach yourself from her her plight like the guy emerges as a sort of comedic character because he keeps while he's with her he, he takes her he takes her like out her out of her house and like like walks with her through thistles and brambles for seven hours where he's got a camp set up where he does the things that you would be afraid that, that he would do. It's, it's, it's all there and he's, it's, it's all in his head. It's all about him. He's a prophet and he needs a new wife and all this shit. But, uh, you know, and she goes there tastefully, but also like it's, 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 she's, she's really very healthy. She's 25 at the time she's writing the book and it's very healthy, very inspiring how like, fucking like she's just like yeah then that happened and and like it's 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 odd it's honestly odd i think she's mormon too right like because uh, so. and that is true that when they when they found her she wasn't resistant it wasn't that she um it wasn't that she uh was com complacent about well, she, there's there. these moments there's these moments that we don't understand in the story where <laughs> like like there's a cop that comes up in the public library and she's sitting there and she's like she the cop is yeah. like I tell me your name, and and there and like she, we just use logic to go, oh well, of course now it's time to mm -hmm. do this. And so, you know, you know, but it's like she's abused and she's terrified. The interesting thing about her book is that she swears, uh, like like she's very adamant about the fact that this is different from Stockholm syndrome. Like like, yeah. and she's trying to make the point. She's a victims' rights act a advocate now, and she's like very, very adamant about this, which I think is just. Incredibly interesting. If I thought I was a good interviewer at all, and I didn't think that I was gonna like, like I, I, I was such an interesting person to talk to, but I, I, I would never want to go near somebody that I could ever like accidentally uh, hurt with my insensitivity. But she just seems so fucking robust and it's revenge. so great, greatest revenge. But she's like, she's like, I was never. It's not Stockholm. It's like I never had empathy for this fucking right. dunce. I think she she makes fun of him for the whole book, and it's like I. I was just, I took him at his word. I was 14 and he was the guy with the knife and he kept saying over and over again, if, if, if this ever ends. <laughs> just ignore it. I'm trying to tell you about a horrible abduction right. that lasted a year. <laughs> But she, 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 of course, she was just like, I took him at his word that if this ever ends and it's at all your fault, like if you ever drop the dime on me, you know, like, like I will figure out a way to kill your family. I'll kill your little brother. I'll kill, you know, just over and over again telling her that. So that's what she's experiencing in these moments when people are coming up to her and going, hey, are you, are you this kidnapped girl? And she's like, she's screaming in her head. To don't involve me in this shit. Fucking yeah. save me. <laughs> yeah. It's very, it's very, very interesting. There's I, also I, a little bit of a backstory, perhaps about the community that she was raised in, and the the fact that 
when, I, I, if you are already mildly abused or if you've already been in a society that denigrates women, when well, someone I comes mean, to abduct you, you may play along. Yeah, I mean, I so don't... Like, like advocacy afterwards sounds like that's the way to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you know, it's throw. It's a throw. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you guys. That was a good taper. Like, <laughs> obviously, we can't coordinate total silence. And, and you know, some of you come here because you hate me, but if you, if you, if you want to make me fucking proud, <laughs> let, them, let, them, let them stew and just try as hard as you can. Just fucking abject silence. They really the should have time. to work for your love at this point. But don't do it because you think like, oh, I'm gay. You, you know, you want me to win. You know, I know you love them. If you love them, teach them a lesson. <laughs> teach them a lesson about stagecraft <laughs> and respect. <laughs> um, now back to Elizabeth Smart. <laughs> but, I, but I really want to address that because it's like, I mean, I, like, like that's, that's the thing is like, we, we I, I believe her family was Mormon, but it's, it's noteworthy that you wouldn't know that from reading the book because I think her fate, you know, she was never like, well, because of my magic underwear, I was protected or all this stuff. Like, it's very clear that the dude is Mormon, that this like psycho is Mormon, and that he's abusing all these tenets of Mormonism. It's like, like, like that, that he's twisted it. The only thing that's clear with her is that she's basically like the American goal. Like, and yeah. that, I think that's what's important is like if you that you we think, oh, we want our 14 year old daughters to be. Um, you know, uh, 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 unsoiled and, and, and never have had any thoughts into their head. And it's like, so it's sort of an interesting, like, kind of Christ myth when you're listening to it, because you're like, well, this is supposedly the American dream as far as what you, you, you want your family to have this white picket fence and all these things. And it's like, it, it, there is this thought in your head that goes like, well, and then she's so, she's so, Pure and modest and and humble and and so it's uh, that that like this doofus who has who who has no right like 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 is he's he does he doesn't he doesn't he's, he's exploiting it like she doesn't know she's being exploited and she's not she's uh, yeah it, it it it's a real roller coaster that you go through when you're listening to the story which is why wh- I I kind of it was kind of eye opening to me because the other half of the time all you're thinking is as in that South Park episode where they meet the the Mormon like the it's like like the other half of the time you're going Jesus Christ I gotta convert to this fucking religion because this is some powerful shit like this they girl think- survived some crazy shit and it was specifically because of her faith faith these brand names get us fucked up. Uh, Christianity, Catholicism, the names get us fucked up. Yeah, her but fa- faith. Her faith is a, a, is a, is She a thought that there was a God with her the whole time. That was yeah. like, and she's not shoving that down your throat in case you want to listen to the book. It's like it's not like she's like selling that to you. Uh, but but she did, she uses the force a couple times in the story, <laughs> and, 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 and 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 she doesn't she's well, not obnoxious not about it. I think it's really interesting. It's also she, she narrates her own audio book, which is yeah. like cool because she's like yeah. sort of like it's like amateur like 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 she's like 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 she her inflection is like this is the real person. Yeah, and she's she's like I didn't know <laughs> like she's describing this like doofus going like today I'm gonna do, she's like mocking him with her voice. You know, like, and then he came back and like, well I just decided that God wants me to do this. And I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> and, 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 You're trying it, to really, tell me that Selena Gomez could play this role. <laughs> I, 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 think the, I think the feeling that, that, that left me with a net positive was like, wow, you could be a 14-year-old girl and have the worst possible fucking thing happen to you for a year of your life and you could emerge. She, she, she was like, she's just a regular person. Yes. Like, like, and, 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 if, and she actually keeps pointing out, she's like, actually... She doesn't want to say, I'm glad this happened. She's, but, but she's like, I, I'm grateful for... She's like, if it hadn't happened, what would I be? Some schnook that doesn't uh, know how bad it can get? Like, <laughs> also, you statistically, she's very lucky to be alive. So at oh, that, God. You know, I mean, yeah, as thing. far as, yeah, the percentage of people who, who have had a dude come into their bedroom with a knife? Yeah, she's one of the, <laughs> she's, I, 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 oh, God. And yeah, I, I, it's a pretty short book. It's kind of interesting. I, 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 like, it's such a weird, it's like the three stooges of abductions. 
and it is uh, inspirational because somebody actually lived through it. Because of her. Because, of, yeah. because it's inspirational because she's like, she, yeah, she, she's, she's on her own and she just kind of gets, she just survives. And it's a bummer, a culture where survival is the new success, but sometimes that's the thing you need to remind yourself of, I guess. I don't know. I, 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 my, my personal journey has gone from uh, I am happy in, in, in spite of you, you being you, listening. Uh, and I crossed a threshold at a certain point, and I am happy because of you. And that was glorious. That was great. Um, and uh, I, am, I am now entering my third act of I am now, again, happy in spite of you. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that if you are a fan of mine, you don't blame me for that. And that's why I love you, but like I can't, I can't keep coming to you for happiness. I gotta be, I gotta be 45 years old and be like, here's how you're happy. If a 14 year old girl can do that in a fucking tent, where she's actually being like, yeah. <laughs> I, I really, I really, I feel you, you really, you truly believed yeah. that everyone was. <laughs> Yeah. Should hey, that, you guys, I, that was you guys are, that was true belief applause. That was not. He was like, I'm. You, that was not like shit. Beastie I'm Boys, starting. like irony generation applause. Like, yeah. That was like and he was all, like. I am shocked that you all did not help your boy out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but don't feel shame because you're fine the way you are. Uh, Just next time, sit at the back of the house. Then they'll all hear it and be like. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> if you do it down front, people are like, look at this dumb motherfucker. <laughs> It's funny, he was the one who was, like, excited that you were embracing internal forms of motivation, and everyone else, like, they didn't clap at all, because they weren't similarly internally motivated to clap. Yeah. <laughs> you know what does make you internally motivated to clap? Me undies. Really? Uh, would you be wearing me undies this evening? Oh, of course. I'm, I've wow. been wearing them, like, much like first-class travel, I have never gone back. I, Excellent. Uh, Is I, it the softness or the fit? Uh, it's the cockpit. Uh, it's no, the cockpit. <laughs> they should call it the cockpit. Yeah. <laughs> they could call it MeUndies, if you're listening, the cockpit. No. <laughs> the Don't. diamond pouch, call it the cockpit. It's um. good. I'm wearing them right now. I've never worn them before today, and I'm wearing them on my body. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, it feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. I'd be interested to nothing talk at to all. a... To a, to a... <laughs> You think, wouldn't you like to meet a, a person that had tried me undies and then was like, no, I'm going back to regular? <laughs> yeah. What kind of monster is that? Someone who doesn't like uh, just the right amount of support and comfort. <laughs> the, the kind of person who says caviar is too salty. We're not even going to look back. We're not even going to oh, look behind us. Guys. And we don't need to because coming through the house... Whoa. <laughs> now they're coming in from the back. So proud of you, so proud of you. Which is impossible to do. Uh, this is actually a really good job, guys. Oh, you broke at the end. You held out for a long time. My name is Lenny Sarge. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, for five dollars, you can subscribe to the Harmontown feed and see what's happening because it's hard to explain. This is, why they're say, not, this, is why you, this is why they're not trustworthy. <laughs> no, but these guys—I mean, that I, I, when I when I said try, don't don't clap, I, I it's I, uh, you guys. That was amazing. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I, so it, much it, I was the first one to cry uncle. I, w I was like, oh, that feels so harsh. <laughs> like, like the it music did, started, yeah, and I was good. like, well, why aren't you? Oh, oh, right. <laughs> See. And, and you guys are like, no, fucking like. like it was like, wow, yeah. that is, that's homo sapiens. That's how we beat the Neanderthals. That's also, also children of divorce. <laughs> Because they were like, I know how to be pit against another adult. <laughs> I want to I wanna watch any tree fall. <laughs> Hand me an axe. My, my joy comes from... They're too damaged to submit. <laughs> <laughs> we can't conform. We're freaking out. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can't wait to I can't wait to hear the rest of that 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 Sapiens book. Uh, do you want to talk about the dog door? Uh, yeah. 
Because I, I, I didn't want to talk about it for a while while it was going on, just because I didn't want to advertise that my house had a malfunctioning dog door on it of any kind. Right. Because I didn't want people to be like, some, some guy's like sharpening his knife on a whetstone, <laughs> and he's like, did you hear episode 321? <laughs> he says the back door has a piece of plexiglass on it that keeps coming up every time the yeah. dog comes near it. <laughs> And then, and they just have all these posters of me on the wall with like the eyes cut out. And... Try not to, try not to hit his garage this time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now that it, now the old the old door is back installed, and I I don't know I I thought it was such a funny. I yeah I feel like you might want to at least take lead. I mean I'll fill in and add and take take pick up the slack, but I don't know what angle you're coming at this from and. <sighs> I had this thought in my head that, which maybe some of you have, which I'd be ha I'm, I'm happy that I can relieve you of, which is the idea that with money comes this ability to like just sort of, like, like make things happen, like 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 like, to, like without without uh, without caring about them. Whether they're like, well, I'm I'm rich now, so the dog door is not perfect. Like I, I, and I, now I can't even remember what wasn't perfect about the dog door because now I'm, I want to kiss the dog door I have. But uh, it, 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 I, I was like, why can't there be a dog door that uh, doesn't need batteries changed in it uh, and doesn't require batteries to be changed in a fob in the dog's collars because they make these dog doors where the dog gets close to the dog door and that's when the dog door opens or unlocks. And, uh, and, and this is kind of a list of shit. And also, I was like, and inevitably, like, I'd, li I'd like it to be electronic also, because I have a Crestron system, like a home automation system, which has also never worked. But one day, I have this idea that I'll be sitting in my bed, and I'll be like, did you hear that, honey? <laughs> what was that? Sounds like coyotes. <laughs> No, no, it does not. By the way, that's exactly what coyotes sound like. Not, not at all. Okay. That's why they're fucking terrifying, because they don't sound like an animal. They sound like a fucking like, dude at Target. Like, they sound, like, like, like arguing with his girlfriend. They just sound, you're just like, what's going on out there? Why is there a dude, why is there a gang of dudes upset about a sale? And, it's like, and then you listen, and they're like, what? Oh, God, it's coyotes. And, the, and then the scariest thing about it is that then your dogs, they hear the coyotes, and they're like, they react in these random fucking ways. Sometimes sexually. Uh-huh. Like, you can't tell the difference. Like, re, you know how your dog reacts to a skunk or a raccoon? They get excited. Like, if there's a fucking coyote out there, the dogs are like, hey, <laughs> They're like, so, they're like, the, the call of the wild. They're like, I want to go with the circus. I'm like, these motherfuckers want to eat you. Yeah. They, ne they ain't going to fuck you. If they do fuck you, they're going to eat you after. Like, they don't, they, they don't give a shit. These are hungry-ass wild cave dogs from, like, the fucking last millennia come down here to, like, fucking eat squirrels and chihuahuas. And don't... <laughs> Don't fight, the, but the dogs are like they hear it and they're like, I want to go out there. I want to, oh, oh, oh. and the, and the, and it's just you hear. It's like it's the scariest thing in the world to hear. He's like, yeah. So, anyways, I'm just saying, like, my fantasy was to deal with that and then hit a button and be like, okay, that's enough of that. Like, <laughs> I'm not letting my dogs out. Or like they sometimes you smell a little skunk in the air and then your dogs are like, ma, there's a skunk out there. And they're like, that means it's time for me to go attack the skunk and then you can bathe me for eight hours and then you can change your cushions. And then you go, no, it means it's time to lock the door. Yeah. So I had this fantasy. So all this, you know, like electronic and uh, dog collar activated, so they could they could pick and choose when they want to go outside. Uh, but if I want to seal them in for the evening because of uh, Mother Nature, I hit the button. Okay, all of that from my bed. So <laughs> Spencer, like the whole time for like for like the last two years, it seems like like Spencer's like. I got it. Like, like this is technically Spencer's job, but it's not really fair to Spencer. Like, I, 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 I don't. It's like it's it, just long term. Like, it's hard to crack one of these things out really quick. So as a result, it's like I don't know. Yeah, it's like, it's like it's like Levy's in charge of like the calendar and the finances, all that shit. And like 
Spencer's like my friend, but yeah, also like I'm. Pay- it's like it's like oh, if, uh, like the it's like oh, there's a video game. Can you get it for me or something like that? It's kind of like, <laughs> like like but but like here and, and it's like it's, so it's not like it's not like I'm ever like Spencer's fucking up because there's not a thing. And it's like Sp- and Spencer doesn't also knows he's like I'm not gonna bug my friend about the thing and like 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 so like for for a year and a half or something I'm like. What about this do- dog door? And then you'd, you'd come in and you'd go, okay, so I, I found this dog door. So it meets your specifications. And I'm always like, yeah, 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 that's great. That's fine. And then, and then, and then sometimes you'd, you'd, I think back in my head and you're like, yeah, it's kind of big. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, my dog's big. <laughs> And then, like, and then other times are like, oh, it kind of sticks out from the door. <laughs> like when you stall it, I'm like, whatever. I don't. I'm not a fucking. I'm not Martha Stewart. I don't care. <laughs> Function over form. Let's Elon Musk this dog door. <laughs> C- cut to the dog door is installed. Finally, like, it, it, it's like this is the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. It was this giant, like, picture a back door. So first of all, the back door had to be completely replaced because the dog door is so big that no door, no normal door can no contain it. No ordinary door. Because yeah. it's basically the size of a door. Yeah. <laughs> the dog door is so big that if Spencer and I, like, were going out for the evening, we might, and we were wearing collars, we might yeah. just actually put less energy into leaving the house by ducking down and moving through the door. That's you how big the dog door through. is. I it, compared it to the size of a not mini fridge. <laughs> I'd say it's, it's so closest. So it's a lobby. It's, 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 it's like a fridge in size hanging off the door. Wow. It's, it's, it's certainly the size of a chubby criminal. Uh, <laughs> an ad- a full-on adult hasn't even earned being in See, your house because he's not even... He's fat from his last robbery. Now, I maintain... And he's just like, well, you know, as long as I'm here... I will maintain... I feel like the do- your dog is, almost, is also that size. Which yes. Is, that's the problem. Yeah, but my dog ain't going to do shit about the robber. Yeah, I mean, my, the, the, you know... Do you, like, uh, do you ever think about a fence? Oh, got, we have one. I got fences... To beat the band. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, like, like, what? Well, before you don't, you know, like, no, look, no. if I've learned one thing, it's that I should have been happy with just being a caveman and letting my fucking Dino out into the backyard, <laughs> the Pronto Burgers. Like, I get it now. But I thought in my head, I thought, oh, you get this money, will... and then you start doing this James Bond thing where you're like, you can like wave your, you do the Minority Report in your bed, and then your dog is like happier than if you were a regular dog owner. It's all untrue. It's not true. Like it's... no matter how much money you get, you can't, you can't. Your dog just needs to be let out, <laughs> and then let in after it shits. <laughs> and you gotta, you gotta care about a living thing. All right, there's no end run around it. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you. So you may as well go back to your shitty job tomorrow and have a big smile on your face because no matter how many promotions you get, you're never going to get to stop caring about fucking people. Uh, weird when you don't laugh at shit like that. It's like, a, it's like, why did you buy a ticket? I thought you liked my lack of empathy. Um, anyways, but the fucking... Du- and the, So Har- Nigel fucking loves the thing. Nigel's oh, this, yeah. like, sh- the shitty little dog that doesn't need anything because Nigel will find a way out of anything. Like, Nigel, you could just... You could raise him in an environment that was, like, hermetically sealed, but, like, le- like he'd figure out how to yeah. get out anyway. Yeah. No, I sent Nigel out for pizza the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel just, like... So he, he, like, loves it. He walks up to it, this giant plexiglass guillotine goes... It's nine feet tall. Nigel, like, looks at it, walks right through. <laughs> and, and, and he goes and shits and pisses and does what he eats his fucking rocks and twigs so that I'll have to give him unnecessary surgery later. He comes back. <laughs> Harvey is like... <laughs> he can't. Harvey... Who, Harvey spent the three weeks that this thing was installed just like like like, like shitting everywhere in the house. <laughs> yeah, well, Nigel just ran in and out. Yeah. I would let the both of them out. Like, like Nigel would come back in and Harvey would just sit there and go, woof, woof. <laughs> Like, like, please, and then I, I, I remember, like, like, and he, like, he, like, he can't, like, the thing makes a sound that makes him, like, cower away from it. I can't say I blame him. I mean, it looks like a guillotine. He thinks Harvey is, he thinks Harvey or Nigel's going to another world. <laughs> he 
He's like, I am not going into that portal at all. My even heart if the other is dog like, is. I, is that like, like, if you ever, I don't know if you, you know, some of you may have kids, and like, I know parents. Like, I've talked to parents, and I know that they always secretly have a favorite if they have two kids. Damn. I know it's a thing that you don't admit and that you can't because uh, legally with the parent guild. <laughs> but the, the, there's two kids, and I know that parents with two kids they always go like, "Well, Monica's like, she's the jam." <laughs> <laughs> and Toby's kind of a prick, but yeah. we love him because he's our kid. Like you, you, you get that when you have a kid. I get from parents that they go like, you know what? One of the great things about being a parent is you realize that your job is to just bring another shithead into the world. Yeah. Like that, that you get you quickly get over this idea that you're like, well, I'm Leopold the third. I can't wait for Leopold the fourth to prove I was right about my thirding. Um, you're quickly like, okay, what's that? I eat cardboard? Okay, fine. <laughs> I, I guess that's what you were going to do, no matter where you were raised. Like, I'll just keep you from getting arrested. And, yeah. And, and so anyway, so, that, so that's why parents, like, after a few margaritas, they'll go, I, yeah, I like our daughter, but I don't like our son. <laughs> and I get it having two dogs, because I'm like, uh, Nigel... Damn. Not, <laughs> parents are going to hate you for that. <laughs> Yeah, they can hate me all I want. They <laughs> are hating the, 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 their shame. Yes. It's their yeah. shame. Like I'm a, like, if you're a parent and you're out there and you're like, I love my kids equally, well, then I guess I'm not talking about you. <laughs> like, yeah. so why are you mad? Yeah. You know? Like, get, 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 uh, suck my... Uh, 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 daddy uh, dick. No kid dick. Yeah. <laughs> like, 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 here I am on my throne of no kids. I'm telling you, fucking, you hate your kids. No one knows that better than me. <laughs> I got dogs. I'm just saying, I, I get, like, Harvey, Har, Harvey is the smartest dog I've ever met in my life. He watches television. He, when he sees things on television that are supposed to excite him, he gets excited. I can't get mad at him. He's like, it's, it's like, Ho, 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 here's reindeer. And he's like, ah, ah, hey, there's deer, there's deer, there's a whole shit ton of deer. And I'm like, Harvey, Harvey, take it easy. And he's like, you take it easy. There's a fucking window with deer. And, and, and I, can't, I can't get mad at him because it's like, well, he, Nigel's just like, what, what? He gets mad at, he just starts barking at Harvey. Nigel doesn't, <laughs> Nigel's just like, his eyes don't move at the same frame rate or. I, I don't know what the fuck. Well, I, I, try, I tried to get clarity on this from scientists. and the, they, Nigel probably just knows it's TV. I <laughs> And he just He's doesn't like, give hey, a Harvey, shit. It's a television show. I, N N Nigel seems a little more attuned to like the audio, like podcasts and stuff. Maybe I don't know. I'm trying to give him credit, but the thing is, like, it's like Nigel's the jock. Like Nigel, like can catch a ball, you throw it in the air. Like Nigel, like gets everything. Like Nigel, like hacks everything. He's a mutt. He like he's like a little grimy little street urchin, and <laughs> and so he should be. You want I want him to be me. I want him to be a carbon copy of me. I want to be like I'm Punky Brewster. He's Punky Brewster. He's my adopted kid. I want to be. I want to have that bond. But no, Harvey's my kid because he's homeschooled. He's from a breeder. He's afraid of <laughs> of not being liked to the point where he's he can figure out way before anyone not likes him like that he's so sad that he should like maybe piss in a fountain like when you come home and he's oh sorry I did that now he's like so sensitive and, and and intelligent and intuitive that he's he he's got this little brother that gets to eat before him and like like he's like ah eh, like like I, I love I mean like have you ever have you if you have two kids is it the one that reminds you the most of yourself that you like the least that's my question <laughs> send your emails to <laughs> Dude, Parmentown. why is this happening to me, dot dad? <laughs> dot dad. <laughs> that is, that's a great question. That is a really great question. Because, like... I think uh, if your kid's creative and funny, and that's what you think you are, you love that kid. But if you're not funny, then you hate that kid. <laughs> but, like, also, the ideal, right, is that you get, you're so, you get your shit so together that you're like, okay, I got a kid now. And you're like... Eh, I live my life like that. That that's the ideal parent. You're not supposed to like, like, oh, he's a little soccer player, ain't he? You're a little soccer player, and then like get mad like that. They're they're like, I don't know, soccer's okay, but I like the trombone. And you're like, what's that fucking dick flute you're playing? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, you just you, you don't even know you're doing it. Like that's the cartoonish example. Like none of us would do that. Or some Angelinos. people do. Some people really have a set goal for their kids. What they want them to do. They put them in shit. They give them little jobs. And some people don't, and they get a president out of it. I, I, the one thing we all know is that you can't. There's, there's, it's hands off. You yeah. Gotta, you just hope that they don't get a gun and a rifle tower. Really, I, I, I gotta say, I'm really impressed with. I, I've, I've said it before. Like, I, the only reason I think I have the capacity to have kids is because of Cody's sister. She's got her kids, and like, I swear, I was like, I was like, when they were younger, I was like, you can't fucking raise a kid like that. You kidding me? Like, like talking to them like they're an equal, and that's the problem with our society and all this shit. But it's like, like. No, she's like, it's like, it's like these, like, it's like this, like, consequences and rule. Like, the kids understand the rules. Yeah. And they also Welcome. understand the most important thing about rules is that actually, if it's a fucking, if you really are, if you really got a bunch of sand in your crack, you can, well, you really want to bend those rules? Because they're negotiable on the back end and the front end. <laughs> you like, gotta, like, like, you like, you got to tell you, me what the rules about the sand and the crack are. <laughs> What? No, I'm saying How like if, you're, if your kids like it's, it's 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 you're avoiding the because I said so thing okay. because because I said so that ain't no rule that's not even a rule in prison because I said so don't even apply in prison like 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 they don't even like like you're in prison and you know that like you can well if you really fucking want it you can get whatever you you know like you can bend the rules so yes. like and that's where we send the people that we hate the most that we don't even care if they ever learn anything like we, we're really unfair to those people we're like oh well you're going to the pits of hell where you should just fucking suffer for the rest of your life and even there like if you if you want a cigarette you can get a cigarette if yep. you want a lock pick you can get a lock pick and like it it, it it so like. It, it's that that I I like that I like those conversations where like parents are having with their kids where they're like, hey, like what what are you what are you complaining about? Like, oh, I want to watch Peppa Pig, you know, and <laughs> I think well so and so and so you wanted to watch Peppa Pig so bad you did you what did you just do? Why am I why 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 are we having this conversation? I, I, I hit someone in the head with a fire truck, <laughs> and so yeah. so. Do you think we're gonna watch Peppa Pig now because of that? Like like just having these conversations, it's kind of like kind of sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it's, like, it's almost like it it uh, it is better that we don't baby talk like we used to. There used to be that thing where we talked yeah. down to kids, and now you really do look at a kid and you go, "Do you want the Bacardi or do you want the uh, right?" <laughs> At because the same it's, time, it's easier on everybody if we can just have a conversation yeah, and versus think, this code switch. And I think there has to be kind of a line there, like 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 probably says the parental expert on his podcast about. <laughs> but but it's it's that that guy that I never want to be and that put me off of kids is that guy behind me on the airplane. It's the it's the it's working class Chris Pratt dad that's flying first <laughs> class, and it has that kid with him, and he's, you just hear this like almost one sided dialogue where this guy's just like. Well, hey, bro, what do you want? What do you want? Oh, you want to do that, bro? Well, what do you think, dude? Hey, guy, well, what do you think? Oh, that'd be awesome. Oh, yeah. What is your shoe, a spaceship? Oh, man, guy. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, and it's just kind of, I, I feel like kids pick up on insincerity before they pick up on language. Like, the kid's like two. He's like, I think my dad's a dick. And I don't have the... <laughs> I don't have the words for it yet, but I think I'm being raised by like Chris Pratt, and I don't like it. Like, I, like that's all I know about you is that you're a fucking like mock enthusiast about every fucking thing I do. Like, I don't know what to trust. Like, what 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 is it that I do that's actually gratifying? My shoes, a spaceship. Go suck my. God damn it! That's, uh, <laughs> suck my tiny little. <laughs> no, they do. They look. They do. It, we, uh, as a society, we sort of roll out the red carpet for the first two years. <laughs> <laughs> for the and first that's ten, good. and then after ten, we're like, "Motherfucker, get a job. You don't see me. You don't <laughs> see me asking like, you for shit." That's not fair, dude. But that's also that's the problem. It's like when the kids get gangly, and then we start being like, "Fuck you." <laughs> they, like that's a pro that's a big problem because yeah. it reinforces the thing. It's like we, we could like blend it a little bit, like yeah. where, where it's like, "Hey, like, look, I'm not." Yeah, it's like like look, you just talk to him like a fucking dude. I I think the baby talk is instinctive to us because literally like I think there's a I think the reason why when we look at a baby we go Ooh, bah, bah, boo, 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 <laughs> is because we we because the babies like are like the CPU that's like fucking yeah. booting and like we know that they actually if we didn't do that if you raised a baby in an environment where they weren't surrounded by hominid faces that were constantly going hey, don't be now. like yeah. that they wouldn't start going Beep, right. but, but you know that they're that experimenting with it and then and then they, they turn two and then they go past the salt and whoa yeah uh, 
Uh, that is true. If you don't talk to your babies, they don't start talking, and you can tell kids that haven't been spoken oh, to. Oh, look who's here. Speaking of babies that need to be spoken to. <laughs> Maybe we can try some of these techniques. Are you ready to come out? Are did you, you did you did you have a good time in your uh, special place, Rob? Excuse me. <laughs> did you do? How, had you, are you feeling better now? About about uh, stage time and when to come out and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm okay with it. I'm all right. <laughs> okay. I love you. I love I love you too, Daniel. Mm. <laughs> Got the Maybe fool, tomorrow yeah. we'll go to the sunflower patch. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to think of what kids like. <laughs> I'm going down Disney. the list of like what I would hate to ever do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds awful. Disneyland. That oh, sounds yeah. worse. <laughs> What if you could just have a kid that was into Minecraft, like, out of the box? <laughs> like, oh, box, that's an unfortunate figurative thing. <laughs> out of the, from the get-go. <laughs> like, if they were like, they are just like, gaga goo goo, and then you're like, Minecraft, and they're like, Minecraft. <laughs> I, would, I just saw a like, baby that would, like, sit on a laptop next to me, and it'd be like, what are you, what are you doing over there? And they'd be like, I'm making a wheat garden. And I'd be like, oh, cool. Can I, do you want me to help you with stuff? Because I can simulate being a father. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that would, be, that would be so cool. That'd be great. I that would be so cool. My post-production supervisor at Community, uh, he had two kids, and he said when I was, uh, he would go, he said, oh, I'm into Minecraft because he saw me playing it while I was editing Community. That's right. <laughs> well, and then also in addition to that, probably wrote a blog in my head. Be a, be amazed. Go ahead. Uh, but he was like, "Oh, you Minecraft," and he's like, "I play that with my kids." And he had like a server at his home, and he would go home and play with his kids. It was like a digital sandbox. A dad playing with his two kids, Minecraft. You know, you can drink with them too. <laughs> once they, well, once they stop yep. caring about Minecraft, but then I would be like, <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, but don't, I, I, like, my, that would be my big thing with my kid. It'd be like, I don't like Minecraft, I want a drink. I'm like, dude, <laughs> what do you think I've been doing the whole time? <laughs> you have, get a drink and come back and play Minecraft. <laughs> what, my, drinking's my Minecraft. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> Minecraft was your drinking. <laughs> Did I get that right? Uh, you need some more ice? Shrub. <laughs> Shrub, do you have nieces and nephews? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and uh, ballpark me on their ages. What's that? Ballpark me on their ages. How old are they? I think I have one that's three-ish. Okay. And the other one that's five-ish. Shrub, one... you want to talk about this guy? This guy, I think the video doesn't really, but do you want to talk about this guy outside it's your apartment? It's been weird. It's been a weird couple of days. Like, God I don't lives know on this what, intersection. what planet we're in retrograde. I think there's five planets in retrograde. <laughs> I think there's five planets. There in was. <laughs> I think they went back. <laughs> That's what I that mean, means. isn't that what retro means? Retrograde means they went back, yeah. They went back a grade. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think that's happened because, like, for the past couple of days, things have been effed yeah. up. My Spotify got hacked. Your Spotify got <laughs> hacked? By far my weakest password. Kate's like, the weakest password. Car got broken into. Whoa. Wow. And my keys, my car keys, not that didn't have Kate's car key on it, were in it. I, I, we walked, we want walked on the beach, left the <laughs> keys, my keys, because I didn't want to carry them, because I only have two pockets. I didn't want to, so I kept my keys in Kate's car. Came back, opened up the door, and. And Kate was like, you must have lost your keys. And I go, I must have lost my keys because I lose things. I lost my keys. But then when I went to the gym this morning, 
They said, oh, somebody tried to use your LA Fitness <laughs> membership <laughs> yesterday, but got rejected, which made me feel like the guy was like, uh, excuse me, I would like to use my membership to get inside your gym. <laughs> and I went, okay, let me take this. Beep. Wait a minute, this isn't you. And they went, fuck, and then ran into the gym. <laughs> it was like, sir, sir, you have to go. No, 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 no. They, he was trying to like work out, and they were just dragging him out. He's like, no, no, no. I was trying to figure out what. <laughs> He's rowing. It's He's me. Rowing. It's Sir, me. that's not a boat. You're, we're still there. Sir, get out of here. You have to get you. Put that weight down. Put those weights down. No. I no. Was, I was trying to figure out the most damage someone could do by hacking my Spotify account. They're, they they're sitting on for a week, and I was like, I think actually the only thing will be a net positive, because I think Spotify will be like, oh, you listen to Tori Amos and Marshmallow? Uh, <laughs> you, you should come to this VIP party. Worse. Uh, is that all that happened to you? Or is there more? Well, hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> I hacked Dan's Spotify last What? Night. No, no. Why I, would you I was it? shooting you a look because I, I did that bit in a text message with you. I was shooting you the, co the comedian's look of like, well, that didn't work. Because <laughs> I thought we were being really funny in my text message conversation with Spencer about how my Spotify account got hacked. All right, yeah. continue. It went over better on the text message. My lesson. trunk yeah. got broken, unrelated. My trunk got broken. How do you know it's unrelated? Because it wasn't related. I mean, it's related <laughs> that we were in the same grade that was retroactive. But, and it was a vehicle, but my trunk got broken... And at the car wash, the car wash man said, oh, I can glue that for you. And I go, what? you broke my trunk. And he goes, oh, this brand of car always oh, get broken. I go, but it wasn't. <coughs> <coughs> then he said, why are you coughing? <coughs> are you OK, sir? I'll glue where did, the trunk where did you, you and Jeff go to punish me for? <laughs> no, 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 wait, 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 listen. And the guy goes, no, I can fix it. I can fix it. And I'm going, well, somebody better fix it because it wasn't broke when I l came here, and now it's broke. And he goes, I can glue it. I can glue it, please. So, <laughs> yeah, important line. Important line. You don't have to look at you. So I'm sitting there. <laughs> is that, I'm sitting is that there, problematic? Is this character like, problematic? Out in the heat, out in the heat <laughs> while this man is gluing my trunk together. And I'm like, what kind of glue are you using? <laughs> because it's hot outside. I don't know if it'll affect it. Let me look at the package. Uh, and then I put on my glasses and I'm reading it. I'm just, I'm just I've turned into my mother. Yeah. What kind of glue are you using? Well, if you keep screwing around and screwing around, of course <laughs> it's going to break. <laughs> You screw around and you screw around and you screw around and you broke the trunk and now you're gonna glue it with this gorilla glue. Well, I hope it works or you'll be seeing me at nine o'clock tomorrow. But give us a snapshot of this guy. Rob lives on on this at this intersection in Los Angeles. Don't say the, the um, address. I, I, I will. <laughs> I said the second most populated city in the United States. Um, uh, also, his uh, gym membership username is Robbie. Is Robert hot, hot robot? <laughs> um, the uh, uh, but the, the, it's every you've been living there forever, and it's like this intersection where clearly, like. It the, needs a stop sign. The government has decided that putting it a stop a sign st there creates a, like, uh, they, they looked at it from a bird's eye. like, well, if you put a stop sign there, the city will shut down. It will, <laughs> it, 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 it's like putting a clot in a thing. And they're like, well, how many car accidents are there? 
Uh, eight a the, day. The most ever? Like, eight okay, but a per day. year, like, so on average, like, they look at the whole circulatory system of the city and they're like, so keep letting there be car accidents and let the insurance companies pay. Because, because unlike a stop sign, those only happen once in a while. But so, it is the most. So I'm replying to my emails. <laughs> And I'm replying, and I'm replying, <laughs> and I'm replying, and all of a sudden I hear, <laughs> Michael Winslow was outside your door. He's now a UPS man. Three seconds later, I hear, And Kate's like, Jesus fucking Christ, what did you do? And I'm like, I'm just replying to email. <laughs> Which ones did you reply to? What are you talking about? The ones that say do not reply? Yeah. They say do not reply. Like I got enough shit going on with Mercury doing whatever it's fucking doing up in the sky, breaking my trunk, stealing your car keys. I got enough shit to work out. Well, let's investigate. Let's look outside the window. We see a three car piled up, shrapnel everywhere. And we see an Armenian woman going, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. We're going back and forth. And this other guy going, oh my God, oh my God, you ruined my life. You ruined my life. I had this car for three days. I can't make a living without my car, and you ruined my life. You ruined my life. Cut to <laughs> three hours later. Oh my God! Yeah. You ruined my life. You ruined my life. When you first told me, you said I can't you heard this guy saying, "I ruined my, my car." I ruined, you ruined my, life. my life. And I was like, my, I was like, oh God! Like, what if he was like a marathon runner and his leg was broken or anything? Like, he's a pianist and his Fingers are shattered. His pianist got hurt. Like, uh, <laughs> if he was Doctor Strange and his knuckles uh, needed voodoo magic to... Um, the, the I don't think Doctor Strange was strange enough. I know you worked on the movie. <laughs> Look, I didn't... He seemed pretty normal. He was like, <laughs> believe me, I was brought in Excuse there... Excuse me, pardon me. That is exactly... How are you, sir? I was thinking he would be, like, doing some Howie Mandel shit, putting the glove on his head, going... I, I know you're doing a bit, but I actually considered that my job. <laughs> I was like, in the sequence where he's like, you're acting why don't you very have like strange, a, a, a Doctor. Doctor Strange from Austin like come in and, like, and he's like, hey, what am I doing? What am I doing? Why are you from Austin? I don't know. And they would like, you know, do some. I thought I was in there because I was like the Rick and Morty guy. Like, it's Doctor Strange. Make you it are. Strange. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Doesn't matter now. God, God, just, would never have to. No, I, so you I, were like saying, he comes in wearing green pants and a orange T-shirt. Uh, come on, all right. Can we not get sidetracked by this? <laughs> I, I, With two big foam hands. But you that said say that the number guy, one on it. You said you heard a crash. Hello. <laughs> you said you heard Hello. a crash. <laughs> the doctor is strange. He ain't in. I was like, look, one of these days this guy's going to meet Tony Stark. How are we going to know the difference between them? The answer has to be that they have Str different motivations. The amount of strangeness. Like, eh, all right. <laughs> all right, Tony's so... Tony's got the weird sideburns. Doctor Strange has the cape. So... <laughs> <laughs> So you said you heard a you heard a crash. Heard a and crash. Then, and then you hear a guy oh going, god. Oh my god, you ruined my life. Wow. And I and I'm thinking, oh my god, can you imagine like all the permutations about like if you were a ballerina and like 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 your ankles are sprained or whatever? It's like, it's like the slightest like physical thing, like somebody or, or like an actor even. Clearly much, he was an actor. As much as we don't like beautiful people, like what your face gets sliced by your 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 thing or your nose gets broken. And, it, and I was like, oh, God, I wonder what that was. But then the guy was out there for three hours, and it, he was out there so long yelling about how his life was ruined that it became very clear that his life was not ruined <laughs> because he had the ability to stand outside and yell about how his life was ruined, and he went into great detail. I mean, I was really focused on his car. It's it like, I can't make money if I don't have my car. If my car can't make money, I can't make payments on my car. So it's like over time, you're like... 
This doesn't. It sounds like you're doing pretty good. Like I don't. I, 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 I don't, I don't think you were like, on your way to like a Forbes the, meeting. The poor lady that was being yelled at by this man, who already felt bad, you know, is being yelled at, being yelled at, being yelled at, being yelled at. The tow truck picks up her car first and leaves the guy. Uh. And he's like, goodbye, thanks for ruining my life. I don't have anybody to pick me up. I don't have any no. friends. Well, at least he has an audience. I wonder why. <laughs> Which is his worst nightmare. You seem pretty I mean, reasonable. I'm sure the guy was having a bad day. I'm sure it wasn't his fault. It I'd love fault. to see, like, that guy, the rest of that guy's life. He might just be like, hold on. Hey, guys, I just am getting a new car. It's so exciting. Yeah. It's going to be great. I'm going to be able to make all this money with my car, guys. That's exactly what I said, yeah. The, the, the 20 the seconds end. before the end, he's yeah. like driving. He's like, I'm so it's happy. French. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God, thanks, boy. I'm gonna make so much money because of this car. It's a stepping stone to a greater wheel. life. I'm so grateful for it. Oh, oh, oh God! Oh God! Hey, yeah, not not a fucking chance. And I'm and I don't say that. I don't say that like he deserved it. What the order fuck? in the court? Oh, order Jesus. in the court. <laughs> the defendant will please rise. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Did you, Madam? Run into this poor man's car. Yes, I did. Okay, you may sit down. And now let's talk to the other guy. Sir, will you please state your case? Oh! oh yeah. it my, life my, life. Life. my life is ruined! My life is ruined! My life! It ruined my life! And I can't make a living! <laughs> Your Honor, if I could read the tape back for just a moment. Uh, Brenda, sorry. Uh, I, I, I don't, oh, you're I I'm sorry, Brandon. Uh, why did I? Why did I make a, apply okay. a gender to your occupation? I'm part of the problem. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a temp, but I look like the other one. Uh, <laughs> so I'm racist too. No, you're fine, Your Honor. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, <laughs> if I could just read back. Uh, you're ruining my life. You're ruining my life. Ah, ah, ah. You're ruining my life. You're ruining my life. Ah, ruining ah, ah, ah. his life, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, excuse me, sir, Mr. Kensington. The, you're not in charge. I'm talking to of Brandon. the jury, if I could please... Sir, I'm, I will hold you in contempt of court. I'm, I am not a lawyer. I, know, I am sir. not a part of this. I just want to use the gym membership. <laughs> Because I have a problem with my back right now, and if I could just, I'm just gonna lift these weights. Oh no! Don't, so, God damn it! That's the oldest scam of the book. How does, it, how does the court keep? Sir, you're gonna have to put those pounds back on before you leave. <laughs> Take these Cheetos. <laughs> no, no, no! Can I leave now? Can I leave? Can I leave now that I'm fat and gross again? But I yes. will. I will try because you did. You sent me. You sent me the video. I don't. We, we promised nothing, but I'll try. Maybe we can hear this guy because this is this is Rob's wife recording it from the apartment. Kate. The glass. Her name is Kate. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Kate. You married us. <laughs> Well, then she's my wife, too, so I can dehumanize her as much as I want. It looks like somebody's Mormon. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Everybody, 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 it's quiet. He was saying that so much that you were able to hear it, and then someone got out their phone at some point. Like, yeah, I mean, he was saying it for a long time. Yeah. And then, I mean, I mean, and the guys, the video, he's hopping around. Like, that's the thing. Yeah, he it's like jumps. it's okay. It's okay to make fun of his tragedy, not because he deserves to have misfortune, but because no. he's fine physically. <laughs> like, in, in all the ways that his mishap could hurt him permanently, he's fine. And yeah. he's, I just he's I, jumping up and down, yelling, yeah. "My life is ruined." I, I, 
I, I ran out of steam pretty quickly. You know this. Like, like I'm like, if I show up in a public place, I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, I'm done. All right, goodbye. <laughs> Lift, goodbye. You'll never see me again. So, but this guy, for three hours, screaming at the top of his lungs. I you get, ruined I, my I life. Get, you I ruined my life. The commitment. I was jealous. I could be, I, I was that guy. I'm this guy. But, I know. But, 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 but he just... It, uh, the, I, I'm I, not. I get tired. I know. I, I don't. I mean, I, I could be, I would, I would have been this guy. I, I, I have doubled down. Like I, 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 I had it I in me. I don't think you're that guy. I had I've it in never me. seen you like when that. When I was 30 years old and shit would befall me, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And I would like, I, you could wind me up and I would be yeah, I in the Glendale so. Galleria, like making a, like, <laughs> like, like I would just, like, I would have this thing. When, like, like, when like, were you ever like that? Well, I you would, you would never see it except like, like once in a while. It was like, but if a telemarketer called me, like, like, a, I, like why is my phone ringing? I would like enter the exchange, like, 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 why is this happening to me? Like I was Christ, you know, like, 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 what, what's, what's with this w ripple in my perfect world that my father created? You know, they're like, hello, uh, Mr. Harmon, this is a courtesy call. To tell you, they, they wanna, uh, who are you? And why are you calling me? You know, it's just like, you just get this righteousness about you. Like, I don't know. When I was like 30, I was like, are you? Still. Like, like, well, still, yeah, I'm not, I don't but mean to imply that I'm mellow and zen now, but <laughs> like, I just got, I just got filled with enough fat that, that I was like, I'm tired. Like, this piggy needs to roll over and I die. Think I think being in the arts, when you're super creative and you have some language and you know how to fucking act a little yeah. bit, you yeah. are the worst person <laughs> little to run bit. in. You're the worst person to run into when it comes to shit like that. But I do, yeah, and I do think I think outrage is help. Like I, I actually don't, I don't want to see less people be so fucking like unfamiliar with, with bullshit that they're outraged. I don't. Like, we talk about outrage culture and like we want to like dissolve it like a wart with nitrous. Uh, or what is it? Was it shit that they would burn your warts away liquid with? Liquid nitrogen. Liquid nitrogen. Um, I don't. I don't think that's totally acid. Good. I think outrage is great. I, I. I think it's amazing for somebody to wake up one morning and be like, you know what? I. I, I haven't been treated like a Lava. fucking human being today. I, 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 l l let alone the princess or the prince that I am, or or the fucking king or the like 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 and and to like enter every exchange that you have with an expectation that that is like fucking like. Because what's the alternative to that? To like take your cues from from a society that thinks you're a piece of shit, like how you should be treated. Uh, some people have to invert that shit, and sometimes that that takes the form of a tantrum. You know, like some people would be like, you know what? I woke up this morning and I'm like, why am I not being treated like a fucking human being? And Tuck your fucking keys. <laughs> Do you how mean can, like how come that? I can't unlock every door <laughs> that I walk towards? But so, sort of like that situation where you just you pop off. And I, I think, think that's a that's a fa I know I think that guy just had to take a giant shit. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to run through. Well, what 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 could have made that guy mad? That that's liter I was literally advocating for specifically him if he was leaving because he was mad. No, he had to take a shit. I think it's okay to get mad. Fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's okay to pop off now and then and be a fucking poser, uh, fucking crazy, hypocritical, fucking punk rock activist. <laughs> well, fuck you! Uh, there well. is something about living in... When you live in Los Angeles, people tend to get out of their cars and rant at you more than other cities. And it Why is, is, I, it, is it the heat? Well, it's, it could be also, though, remember, Los Angeles is like a beautiful city to, to walk into traffic in. Like, Los Angeles is very kind to the fucking pedestrian. You, you step into the street coming out of JFK, and, like, you get a very harsh reminder of, like, oh, shit, it's legal to kill me here. Yeah. Like, like, like they, they're aiming for me. Yeah. And that makes New York run. But L.A., like, 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 like everyone's coming from different countries and, and all this shit, but you, we somehow get it pounded into us that if somebody steps into the street, even if they're drunk and wandering in like we're, you're it's on you if you hit them yeah so that could be that could cr create tension for a almost new york-sized city where like everyone's got to get somewhere and it's like fuck you know everything's on me if i make a mistake like that could create like fucking you know i, I don't know it but, could ruin your life <laughs> <laughs> You ruin know, your life. The, th the other thing I think is like, if a guy is screaming, "You ru this ruined my life." If a car accident ruined your life, the first thing I'm thinking, if I'm overhearing that, is uninsured. 
Like, 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 which, right. which yeah. I, he has my support because it's like, why? Like, I would be screaming on the sidewalk, like, why the fuck is it mandatory for me to have a fuck? Like, if somebody hit me and I was uninsured for a week because I was between jobs and all that shit, that would fucking send me over. I think, I think the dude was just being real big, honestly, because I think if you're fucked, you're really quiet. When, when shit pops off that makes your life really in. But also, if it was super like, his I'm, fault, I think he'd be like, 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 I think it's like, look, it could be, it could be the other driver's fault. Don't you think that would send him over I, I'm, like I'm saying, more? Because he's like, I did nothing wrong, but. I was like, I'm gonna go to the gap and like I, I, I like <laughs> I, I, I like, 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 like they, they told me they told me don't I, I they told me you can't drive uninsured and all this shit. Like he took he took his little canoe out into the canal. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna catch some fish, I'm gonna come back with them, I'm gonna make my village proud. I'm like, like I'm I'm I, and for that to be taken away from him because somebody like went and it was their fault. Technically it's his fault, it wasn't but only his, on paper. It was, it, but the woman ran into him. He he got sandwiched between two cars. So then, so then he got the worst of. It. So then I understand the outrage. I don't. I don't. I don't like. I just get it. Like I just like like if you. People kept yelling at him, going, "Insurance! She's got insurance!" Right. Insurance. And he's like, "You can't you get insurance unless you sell enough pizzas, and I can't yeah. sell pizzas unless people like me, and no one likes me because I don't have a car." <laughs> And, and, and I, I understand that I do, and I, I I will vote for him when he runs for I, I, because he's I, I I don't know if that anger goes somewhere I I get it I yeah fucking, it but. went into my ears <laughs> while I'm trying to reply to my emails and I'm hearing this yeah outside it was distracting but that's I had to make fun of it that's what you're talking about Homo sapiens versus Neanderthals Neanderthals would be like wait someone's Someone's life is ruined. Did you say homeless sapiens? Homo sapiens. <laughs> homo homo ne- neanderthalus. Uh, homo sapiens are the only <laughs> species capable of going. Oh, there's a guy. I hear a guy screaming. My life is ruined. Uh, sounds like a job for the mythical thing I've constructed in my head called the DMV, the state of California, the, the rule of law, the responsibility, Barack Obama, I don't know, <laughs> Univision, I don't know. Like, like you, 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 you have all these constructs in your head, and you're like, I would do more harm than good if I even go to the window and look out of it. But if you were, if you were in a tribe of 150 people, and you were like, you heard one of your best friends going, my life is ruined, you'd be like, well, it's the shitty part of me that's gonna sleep in, but yeah. but we we are capable of creating cultures where we're like, it's actually a pretty good job today. Heard a guy screaming, uh, "My life is ruined." Didn't run to the window to take a picture. <laughs> I, I'm doing pretty good today. Like yeah. like like we kind of pat ourselves on the back for a little bit of numbness because that's how you get through. Oh, a plane goes down with 300 of your of your fellow species, and you don't. I, I don't know. Are you on my side or not? <laughs> are you? What Nothing are you, happened what are you to doing? you. What? What? I'm on your side. Nothing okay. happened to you. Yeah, yeah, I'm just you're saying, well, three hundred people died in a plane crash and you're taking pictures of this. No, 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 I didn't. He just mean, did an Elizabeth <laughs> Smart version of you. I think it's good that you I'm so glad they're so happy. That, that guy would be so happy if you could put him in a chamber that sucked all of his misfortune out and then you told him someone recorded you screaming, My life is ruined, goodbye. And hundred and fifty people. Well, that's still some hundred and twenty. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, uh, I, I get it. It's downtown. It's Monday. Whatever. But uh, the, 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 like, uh, you know, if you could separate his consciousness, he would go like, oh, that's cool. That, like, my, my tragedy, like, made these people happy for a second. Because they weren't like, what an animal. He should be stuck with a spear until he dies. Although I do, again, I, I will say that maybe that dude deserved it. I was, but, yeah. Oh, that's another huge thing that the Sapiens guy talks about. That's why everybody needs to read this book. But people, he but, talks about gossip. Here's like, the thing: is like this woman who it was her fault. She even said, "It's my fault. It's my fault. Right. It's my fault." Was sitting there. She was like being screamed at by this guy. Everybody in the neighborhood was huddled around her. Like, like, are you, are you okay? okay? Do you need yeah. a, blah, blah, blah. like this guy <laughs> was going. Oh, nobody's caring about me. Yeah. And like, yeah. He probably had a neck injury. He got hit really hard. His or it triggered. Total. It might have triggered some loss for that dude, obviously. Yeah. 
Because he really... Well, it well, sounds like it ruined his life. <laughs> <laughs> well, if if we like can take him at his word. Yeah, yeah. People kept saying, calm down, and yeah. people kept avoiding him because he just was... Right. N- he was at, at a 10 and stayed there and never... Which always wa- makes you feel great. Yeah, every right. primate yeah, knows yeah. that. At, at no point he went... Uh, I, at one point... You know, I, I heard him, like, talking quietly, and I went, oh, okay, well, this is the part where he goes, okay, <sighs> blew up to there, I'm really sorry, but, you know, I just, whatever, if we could exchange our insurance information, I think, you know, like, it, I think, but no, he was, like, going, just say you're sorry, just say you're sorry, just say you're sorry, you ruined my life. He was just saying it quieter. Yeah. He was just getting, like, enough energy back to... Scream at her as he was driving uh, home to her family and home and warm bed. Well, that doesn't. Yeah, uh, now, I, now, I mean, I not that I was on his side, but like, <laughs> I mean, just say you're sorry. Like, like it's like, like well, he was screaming. Like, like, there's no. It's like, what does sorry mean to you? Uh, yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I mean, whatever. I, he's twenty. <laughs> Like yeah, you know, I think he's so it, lucky he's not decapitated. That's all I can. Yeah, well, I think you were like saying when you <laughs> when you really are fucked, you just sit there going, shit, shit. You yeah. know, I mean, you don't. It's a like, terrible scream, like you a fender I'm bender, so and you're like, you don't know what the fuck. It, like like what do you do? Like no one tells you. They tell you in like uh, driver's ed class and whatever. But like, come on, like like you. Even it's just a slight tap in Milwaukee. Like the the roads are icy for nine months of the year, and it's like. Through no fault of your own, you just like, boom. You, you just you tap someone's bumper, and it's really up to both of you collectively whether or not, <laughs> all of a sudden, oh, pull over and exchange the information. You just feel like such a, like no one leaves their house prepared for that. It's crazy. Right. Like, yeah. like, and here's the thing: there was a third person involved with this accident. So everybody was huddled around the woman who did, was, it was her fault. Everybody was avoiding like the plague, the guy screaming up and down. And here's this guy that's just kind of, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess so that, that, that's the third guy? Yeah, that's he's me. just like, okay, That's who I identify. Right. <laughs> so, that's homo habilis. Yeah, it's like, I'm <laughs> over here too. All right, uh, I guess the uh, squeak, <laughs> squeaky wheel gets us <laughs> Right. That's everybody in this audience. Okay. That's all of us, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, that would have been me going. <laughs> like, okay. Well, <laughs> if you if if you tell me I'm a bad person, I'll be happy to be ashamed of myself. Uh, <laughs> I'll take my cues from you. I didn't get out of bed to not fuck around with society. <laughs> At the same time, I will draw a line. We don't know where it is, but I will draw it. <laughs> Yeah, I got, I got 12 people that'll pick me up right now, but uh, I don't know. Uh, so what am I supposed to do? Uh, yeah, well, prayers out to every single person in that accident. It sounds like everybody got away. I, I, I like, 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 God damn, like, he, 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 that expression of, like, it, like, it could be worse, like, it always feels like a terrible thing to take solace in. Like, mm-hmm. like, if you're in a bad situation... Silver linings do not help you. You know, well, at least you you're, you didn't lose a foot. Uh, fuck off. But man. I gotta say, I gotta I say, El- Elizabeth Smart fucking, like, she sold me on the uh, it could be worse <laughs> philosophy. Give me a, give me a for instance. Ruining my show! She, so, uh, <laughs> Elizabeth Smart, like, broke it down to game theory. About uh, it could be worse because she was like, "Look, I'll tell you what I got. You know, look, I don't want to use harsh language and like, 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 because it'll sound like I'm making light, because like, whatever. But this girl was through the worst year of a 14 year old girl's life that, that, aside from getting murdered afterward, you could ever be through. And and she and so she recaps it. She has this like sort of bon vivant style of like, like, kind of like, it's like she she checks it off like like she's like. She's like, this is what happened to me, this is what happened to me, this is what happened to me. And you know what? Every single time uh, something bad started happening to me, I kept thinking, well, it can never get any worse than this. And every time I thought that, it kept getting fucking worse. (laughs) And so I started to learn after a while, it can get worse than yeah. this, and that's when it started to get better. Yeah. And I was like, "All right, I got like that's like like she was like I hacked the spiritual system." <laughs> she she was like, "Well, I, I oh I've gotten to a place where I it, it, it sort of but the other half of you goes yeah but that's how we're all conditioned by things like organized religion to suffer abuse you right. know like like 
that's it's a it's very also, fascinating. It's also a bit of a survival skill, though. I won't, I won't trash it too much. It's not conditioning. It, it literally is a thing that keeps us. That's the, and it makes us different. Like the, the, yeah. the Homo sapiens, like we're able to believe in the shit that doesn't isn't real. But the important asterisk on that is that real doesn't matter because once you get like, like the species, we make the unreal real. So uh, corporations, they're just real. Like if Disney's a corporation, like and everyone believes that Disney's a corporation, which it is, even though that doesn't mean anything. Walt Disney isn't alive. There isn't anything. Like Disney's just a belief. It it, it exists of like a bunch of like it's like a tribe scriptures that you have on record and things. But ultimately, like hey, well you know, it, it, like several thousand people like like oh I got, I got fired today. I don't know why. Like it, it be, because this belief in the system like. The belief matters. The belief in the dollar, the belief in your taxes, the belief that you are a citizen of a country. Like, the, it, 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 like, it, it's 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 almost an understatement to say that oh, so much of our life is based on these like fabrications that have nothing to do with reality. Because that would be the most when you really think about it. It's like, well, what did you do today? What governed your life today that had anything to do with uh, biological reality? You took a shit. You sneezed, I, I, like like everything that had anything that you that you culturally like registered, anything that was actually meant anything to you, your self esteem, like 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 most importantly, like whether or not you think you're a good person, like it, it all had to do with like fucking crazy like <laughs> like shit that doesn't it, it doesn't exist. But it does exist. That's the. It's not the. I don't think the important thing is for us to realize it doesn't exist because right. I think that's what a raccoon would do. <laughs> that's why a raccoon keeps going through your garbage, no matter how many times you tell it it's against the law. <laughs> and the raccoon will just look at you and go, "That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't make the raccoon a hero or a villain. It just like makes. It's like it means the raccoon makes it might a die. raccoon. But the truth for that raccoon is that if it doesn't stop fucking with the wrong person's garbage, it's gonna die because of a belief system that that human has like decided on. Like, okay, it's okay for me to poison you because uh, the city of uh, whatever I live in doesn't care. And it's Nevada. A, uh, if it, if, <laughs> Nevada's fine. It's... <laughs> Is Jeff? Is Jeff? Do, do, what, what went on with you and Jeff backstage? Now tell us. Now reward us for our patience. What went on back there? What was your strategy? Because ours won. Oh. I don't think so. I, we were having a ball. Well, I think we had a pretty good time too, didn't we, kids? Yay! I love. I love like the people I didn't see clap. <laughs> like, <"Nah." laughs> well, there's I'm, I'm sorry, like... Dad. <laughs> Mom picked me up on Tuesday and got ice cream. <laughs> so. That's fine. I love them too. Mm -hmm. I don't demand fealty. That's right. That's what makes me different from your fake gods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm the first god to say to you, oh, you know what? No. I'd like to earn it. That's your first and last commandment. Stop Let me it. earn it. Stop it. Stop it. What, you're afraid I'm going to become a cult leader now? <laughs> it's a little late for that concern. It's just so... What? Tedious. <laughs> it's like walking uphill. That's what, that's what Kate said to me one time. Like I would... Because I do bits... You know, when we're driving in the car. You remember those. Yeah. Trob car bits. Yeah. Not necessarily. Like, it's like me testing out material. Usually it's me singing the names of the signs that I, you know, it's like, oh, 25 miles an hour. Right. Shop cool. Yeah. You know, like stuff like that. You know, like that. Yeah. And at one point, like, it was like silent for a while. And then Kate goes, ugh. You know, it's like, Talking to you is like walking uphill. <laughs> and I was like, and I started like almost crying. And she just started laughing her ass off. And I'm like, that's not funny. And then I started laughing because it was pretty funny. And then, but it was funny because it hurt my feelings. <laughs> 
I did like like that's like a vitamin in small doses. Like it's not a representation of your union, but like also that's like your best partner will. I I I I had a girlfriend once who said I just I I was almost so proud of this. In, it was an insult, you know, like we're because we were sitting at an airport gate, and I was like I said I was like I was I was joking, I, like as I paid for first class tickets. And then they were like, we're now admitting uh, uh, people who uh, uh, need to seat, sit first and whatever. And I was like new to first class. And I was like, there was a guy literally with a cane that was clearly blind. And I said as a joke, but, you know, I lean into my jokes when I'm in private. I was like, oh, great. So what do I got to do to really sit first? You know, I <laughs> blind myself. And what? It, what did you say? I, I, was, I, was just, I, just, I was just making the joke. I was, it, didn't, it didn't matter what I said. It was like the joke was, uh, I'm first class, but the blind guy gets to get he on the plane first. He paid with his sight. I, <laughs> what did you pay? I am aware of the a goddamn thousand irony, or I wouldn't have said something. If he would have traded, <laughs> but my, he would. <laughs> my girlfriend. Go first. Can I see my baby? My oh. girlfriend. My, <laughs> You don't know that he got blind doing something cool. He could have been an asshole. He might have, he might have poked out an eye in a, 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 a microscope that, that, that is uh, designed to, to make Ebola. So I was like, well, he, could, he was so enthusiastic about making Ebola. He's like, ow, ow, I can't see. Thank God. My point was... <laughs> I re you remember these zingers because they're actually like... They're sp like My girlfriend at the time said, uh, uh, you're like a watchdog group for one. And I thought it was... <laughs> I thought it was really funny and scathing. Like it really kind of. It was like, yeah, I really am like, like the most ridiculously horrible narcissistic person. But it was like also like an expression of like, wow. It's like like for a partner to be like, you are awful. <laughs> it's part I of. Think, it's I part think, of. But at the same time, and I think this the reason I started laughing, is because I was. It, because what Kate, because uh, we, we talked about it for a long time, just dissecting why we were both laughing. And she said, the reason is, is you were trying as hard as you can <laughs> to make it feel like I was walking uphill. Right. Listening to this. Yeah. And you were trying as hard as you could yeah. to be a horrible person. Yeah. We yeah. succeeded. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is what couples do. And right. now, but the shortcut to that is like you can be pleasant with each other about everything else if you just take the lid off the fart uh, uh, rule. What? Just fart with each other, and then because then you can be like, "You're awful," because that was awful, <laughs> and, and then like you can both be like, "Yeah, that was bad," and then they're like, "Oh, let's get back to our partnership." Like, like in all other matters, we're best friends, <laughs> but but don't do that again. Yeah. Ha, ha, ha. I won't. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm from Missouri, so if, uh... <laughs> you want you 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 want me to show you a fart? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so uh, we don't uh, we don't really fart in front of one another ever, which is I've done I've done both. I've done, I think I've talked about that before. Like I I I, I just, uh, Sarah. I don't think she'd mind me saying this because uh, Sarah was going out with Jimmy. Uh, Sarah Silverman going with Jerry, Jimmy Kimmel. Who you think like okay, these two are comedians, they're artists, or whatever. That she, I remember we were talking about farting, and she was like, yeah, Jimmy and I don't we fart around each other. This on the and I was like, you guys don't fart around each other, blah blah blah. And and so me and McGathy, we did a whole marriage. It was like, yeah, let's not. The only thing I learned from it is that that's a thing you can do. That's a total option. Like it wasn't. It didn't make it worse. It didn't make it better. Right. But uh, <laughs> but it, but it, but it's a distinctive decision. I think actually what it taught me is. When I was a, when I was a 25 year old kid, like who was like, oh, I associated like farting in front of each other as like with like a threshold of intimacy. Yeah, that actually had to do with abuse. Well, that a word that word is too heavy, but but like 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 that that it was like, oh, you're family now, which means you're like, like I don't respect you now. We're not we're not we're not. You know, like it's like it's like when the farting becomes when it signifies like, well, you don't matter to me. You know, like they, that's what you don't want to enter Isn't, your head. 
isn't the problem kind of making farts symbolic in any sense for the relationship? <laughs> <laughs> that could like, be... Because when it means something, isn't that the... Like, whether you're doing it in front of each other or not doing but making it mean something, that seems like, well, what are, what are we doing? I, <laughs> I think you may be the most right and most wrong right. like, about this, because it is, yeah, you're right. Like, first of all, good luck making farts not mean something. Not mean like, the wrong thing. Like, well, well just... Like, because... Cause, you know, g- getting to that place where it's just, well, farts are just when air is expelled from your anus. Like, come on, good luck. They're right. hilarious. And, but at any given time, it's like, it could be, like, if someone's saying they love you and then you fart, like, the timing <laughs> means you don't love them or whatever. Right. Or, or if they're farting more than you because they're lactose intolerant. Right. I don't like, want to open that door. That like, all sounds like madness. Right. So, 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 but th- no, I do, th- but I, I do think, I do think you're right in that if you maintain the idea that, well, farts happen, so they don't have power over us. So if I do fart next to you, it doesn't, it can't possibly mean by itself that I don't love you. It's certainly not supposed to. That's not the point of it's, doing that. Uh, any more than exhaling or, l- or lightning striking, because right. really it's just may as well be weather. Yeah. The, but the big, the, but I, I think when I was younger, I think growing up blue collar and kind of Midwestern and like I, like just sort of cultural things, it's like, I think I had it in my relationships. Like, if you're if you're listening to this, and I doubt you are, that, and you dated me when I was 19, I don't think you're listening to this podcast. But let's go ahead and bring Katie out. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's like it's like oh yeah, it's like yeah, like it was flowers and candy, and then we started farting in front of each other, and then it turned into like kind of trailer park, like whoa, we're what we're ball and chaining each other. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. The, like the, the, like, but that has nothing to do with the fart. It has to do with the symbolism that you project. Right. Which is that's probably the real problem. Yeah. Whereas Co- Co- Cody and I fart all over each other constantly. You're, you're, I'm saving one up for her right now <laughs> because it means I love you. That is. Your dad kept a big barrel of pretzels next <laughs> next to his recliner. Do you remember? That? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. would have like a big Costco's. Big thing of pretzels that were yeah. all dried out and nasty next to his recliner. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. What? Try to stop eating them though, right? I would eat them. Yeah. And you'd eat more and you'd be I like would, this dry ass giant brick pretzel and then you'd, like, you'd keep eating them. You would eat them, I would eat them. I'm assuming your dad would eat them. And they were it was always full. It was because uh, he would full. get another barrel. Yeah. 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 And I think one time I went out into the garage <laughs> where where there was the jukebox or whatever that he had or whatever, and there were all these barrels of pretzels. <laughs> Your dad liked big God. fucking pretzels. <laughs> they were big ones. They weren't little, I like... Did, giant pretzels, barrels little, of them. Like, Quit making me love my dog, dad, bro. Dog biscuit pre- pretzels. He, he got it. He gets it. He my fucking dad gets nailed it. it. He had the recliner, the remote control, and the pretzels in arm's reach and backup pretzels in the chamber <laughs> next to the jute box. Because he probably noticed, he probably like one day he came home and he's like, what who we, ate my pretzels? What are we doing? And then he was like, wait, I have money. Get Give a me billion some, pretzels. Get if you pretzels. love pretzels that much, get a billion pretzels. Like, I how love mu- my, how my, much for one? Well, it's about $15. I'll take everything you got. <laughs> Here's my address. How much to ship it to my place? It'll take those. Five. Fuck it. Here's my credit card information. Meet me there in 15 minutes. We used to make fun of my dad because my dad was, uh, he, he subscribed to this company called like Blair. That was like, his, basically his, all his clothes came through the mail. And we just made fun of him because he was like, oh, your dad, your clothes come through the mail. Come on. Cut to... Uh, yeah. ha- half of our sponsors. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's, uh, Socks R Us would be happy to f- put you in a pair of socks. Just sign up to Warby Soccer and we'll put some socks on you. Like, it's like, like, like a bill, bill, of, bill, of, bill of booty and, and but, but a Chico. And, yes. But we, we yes, would just, is. we would make so much fun of my dad because he was like, it was like, Dad, what do you get your clothes in a box from a right. delivery man for? And he's like, ah, what? What do you, what do you, what do you, what, why, why are you making fun of me? What am I going to pick the best shirt in the world at a store? <laughs> All of a sudden, everyone's going to start respecting me, right? Like, like, oh, yeah, like, here's an idea. Uh, 
here's the shirt size, here's the pants size. Fucking mail me pants and shirts and I'll go to work. Are we uh, perfect are, human? <laughs> do we have uh, a little D and D? Yeah, it's it's close. We've got about nine minutes of D and D. We should true. bring we should bring Jeff Davis yeah, out well, for the D and D. Did he leave? Really? Well, we could try it. But don't you think so Jeff, is, Jeff, Jeff is either waiting or at my bet is not waiting because <laughs> Jeff thinks that his final revenge is going to be in the form of us going, Jeff, where are you? Where are you? To silence. Don't you think he's not back there? Well, I think he's still back there because he's, uh, he's Jeff Davis. He's a reasonably loyal dude. Well, is I'll that... go look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because what I won't do is beg for it. I won't do it. <laughs> he has to earn it. He has to earn it. He doesn't have to earn it because I wouldn't do that to another person, but I won't have it done to me. <laughs> I introduced him. He made a bit out of it. Now he's gonna lay in that bed. <laughs> like, like, like I, I'm willing to be even Steven. I'm not gonna like take revenge or be like, mm. like I, I want all I want is friendship and equality. That's all I've ever wanted. Yeah, you sound dangerous right now. <laughs> so I, what, all you need to do is come up to my tent for nine months and worship the Mormon Christ. <laughs> Can you just say you're sorry? Can you just say you're sorry? <laughs> Have you ever weaponized that? Like, think back through your life going, like, because I have a, like, like, oh, just say you're sorry. Would it be so hard to say you're sorry? Like, have you ever, and then, like, it is hard to say you're sorry. Like, 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 and it should be. That should be a big deal. Like, I'll tell you about them keys, oh, bro. Guy, God damn it. We keep, we keep pissing that guy off. Like, that guy, the only thing he doesn't like is human fidelity. He doesn't. <laughs> He doesn't care if I'm like breaking through to the inner rage. He's like, God damn, I don't fuck. I wanted to hear when season four is coming out. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I, I do when, when it's done. I, I don't. I can't say. Oh, 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 oh I can read a. Uh, I'll read. I'll read an S and P note. We got our first S and P note from uh, Rick and Morty. Oh we, uh, hell yeah! Uh, and it seems kind of harmless uh, to read it. I think. Let's see. Give me a... a Morty's uh, butt is simply too large. <laughs> it's so Give much, us a beat! <laughs> it's so much more... Uh, okay, what is it? I don't know if I just type Rick and Morty. Is that... I like that you looked at me. Uh, I don't know. I can't... Well, Read these notes to a beat. Read these notes to a beat. Delivery status. I, I, I did want to talk about, like, I, I had this thing. I mean, my new favorite thing is Canadian Canadian horror podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's this podcast called the No Sleep Podcast. Yeah. Woo! yeah. Why are you guys... Or, okay. Probably, you're just, you're just fan, you're fans like of it, too. There's, like, 11 seasons of it, and I'm, like, on season four. And I'm fine, like, the guy sounds exactly like Scott Thompson from Kids in the Hall. Like... <laughs> So Canadian, and it's so funny. Like I, I swear, and I, I say to David Cummings, host of 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 that podcast. Like I want to just asterisk because because like I don't like it when people are like they like they hit people and go like Dan Harmon made fun of you in his podcast or whatever. Like that guy that was like up and disappeared or whatever. Like like like, like I, I mean yeah. I will fly you first class to Los Angeles to be on the show and celebrate you. I love your fucking podcast. I go to sleep to it every night. I, I like like, but I, I and so now here's the part where you maybe maybe I'm teasing but it's like, I just love this like it's this creepy pasta podcast it's like and it and it, and it and it just starts with this like creepy music and this this guy that sounds like Scott Thompson from Kids in the Hall goes like as the darkness descends into the wilderness yeah. Yeah. and your heart nightmares come out to play <laughs> it's time to surrender to the horror, because tonight there will be no sleep. <laughs> I, I, I just find it fascinating that there is absolutely no way to be effectively scary <laughs> when you're that Canadian. <laughs> Which I want them, to, but it's like, and every, at the top of everything, it's like he, he's like, 
this is welcome to episode seven of season three of the No Sleep Podcast. A few orders of business. We are raising the price on the Patreon silver package. Until tonight's chingly, spine-tingling terrors of terror are about 73 cents per spine-tingle. Like, it's so fucking Canadian. He's so cost-effective and so... And like, oh, you all remember Otis Redis from our last uh, thing. He's having some trouble. Without going into too much detail, uh, he needs some help. There's a GoFundMe page, but the, like, the GoFundMe will always be like a weird Canadian version of GoFundMe. Like, there's a Royal Federation uh, uh, super PAC page. Of, uh, like, 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 uh, Sign like, in to help, guys. What? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, but without further ado, it's time for the terrifying tales. <laughs> and, and I use it to, it's called the No Sleep Podcast. We literally sleep to it because it's so comforting. And, but it's, it's, yeah, it's, he's adorable. I don't know if he wants to be adorable. Like, he also, like, like, because I'm starting, like, back, I have, like, seven seasons to go before I'm caught up. So I'm still at the era where he's, like, a new a new uh, advent of the podcast, you'll notice on the website, we have something new called trigger warnings. Uh, <laughs> for those who don't know, trigger warnings are, well, with, they're a spoiler-free <laughs> advisory about the type of content that you may in, encounter during a scary tale designed <laughs> to tingle your spine. And, like, we, we always seek to frighten and terrify, but in a safe way that makes everyone happy. Um, don't forget, Bowling League is next Tuesday. And it, I, I, it just makes you... So, I'm, I'm like, if that guy... if I, I Yeah, I, I, I love him so much. <laughs> and so I hope I hope you know everyone's gonna be like oh he did an impression of you and all this stuff and he'll like like I don't know like 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 so I'm saying d d like please come on the podcast <laughs> like I will rose petals for you I love you it's so it's such a great combination Canadian accent and terrifying <laughs> tales of because uh, <laughs> because they're not just generic monkey paw stories they're like they're creepy pasta so like a lot of them are like like fucking hardcore. It's like uh, this next scary tale comes to us from a neighbor who thinks maybe <laughs> when you're planting in your garden, you ought to be careful for, as our next narrator says, the carrots in the soul. <laughs> and then some music will come in, but then he'll affect some like, he's always talking about how he needs more narrators and he's always apologizing. I go, I, I, we could use some more narrators, but I'll do this next one anyway. And, like, like, he, and, then, and then he'll do like, here, I've been planting carrots for a long time. And you, you just get the sense of like, come on, you're a pig and shit. Stop, stop. You don't need anybody. Just fucking do it, baby. Fucking, I want to hear all your accents. He's like, sometimes he does it like, I'm from Chicago, and I like the... <laughs> it, it, well, one time, people told me to watch a Channel 6. Can make your people jump off the building. <laughs> oh, that was a scary one. Uh, this next one's about a pussy of fire. Okay. Whoa. Anyways, what was... Yeah, I know, that confused me too. <laughs> I, why would the next one be about a pussy of fire? But the answer is because it's time to end the show. It's, it's oh, and he says at the end, he's like, oh, that's the, that's the end of our episode. Like, you, you don't have to tell people that. I mean, they, it's ending. <laughs> He starts it with so much business. <laughs> oh, oh, the subscription plan has changed. It's like it's like getting on a bus. Like, like it, it's like, it, and, and a lot of the stories are Canadian too, and they're so charming. They're like, oh, this next one's for <laughs> the guy. Oh, what went down by the lake? And what went down by the lake is a dude lit up a joint, sat on a bench, and he saw something scary, and he never forgot it. <laughs> That's fucking it. Like, oh, oh yeah, you mean privilege? <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, oh, he'll never forget the day by the pine tree lake. <laughs> oh, oh, it was a splash and a ghost was splashing. It wasn't a raccoon. Oh, boy, the cops came over and they gave me a wag of the finger. 
they sniffed my joint underneath the park bench, said, you know, a lot of people wouldn't believe your story. But it ain't my job to judge you. And he walked away. But I'll never forget that spooky bench by the lake. <laughs> but then they're interspersed with totally American, just like, I got raped on the dark web because I clicked on the wrong thing and fucking rabbits came in the window and raped my fucking rape flesh. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, like, but, but they're red in the same place. Like, oh, and the rape and the rape flesh and the rape. Like, well, that brings us to the end of our stories. Uh, uh, it, it, it's a glorious... Uh, podcasting is the last section of the internet to have any fucking health to it. <laughs> I am out of the rest of it. All right, what else do we have to do? Let's just sign off and uh, see people next week. I just, wait, can I please just, because people think I'm kidding, but I, I just got to. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, well. Because uh, we, we, we I feel through. like, okay, just let me, like, well, talk about something. Brandon, do you want to have children? Talk about that for a second. I do want to have children. Why I, don't you yet? What's wrong? I, what I'm do you do? sure that I do somewhere. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, every time I, I tape a TV show, I'm like, are you sure this is going to be on TV? Because my children will find me. Um, I, 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 uh, I don't have children because I date interracially. What? I just, I don't want to do oh, that to a white person's family. Oh, our scary next tale. <laughs> a little bit of misogyny can be a fine time for an upstanding citizen. But our next story tells the cautionary tale of when race mixing goes wrong. Join narrator Brandon Johnson for the story of how I fucked an Indian girl. Oh, sorry. No, that's... We didn't... Okay, sorry. Wait, no, is it, wait, wait, no, you and children, sorry. I didn't mean to, because I wanted yeah, to... Yeah, why don't we just casually talk about me and my lack of children? Um, well, because I, I wanted it to... started with the cats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> once you get over two, you pretty much know it's not going to happen for you. There, there's, there is that. There's, there's also poverty. There's abject poverty. I don't want to make more poor black people, really, is the case. So I didn't have kids. Did you find it yet? Does it have... <laughs> Doesn't having kids seem like an irresponsible move right now? Like, we could, like, like back in Sparta, it was probably a bad move to have okay. a kid just to top off, <laughs> toss off a cliff, you know? It's like, it feels like that. It does feel like that. I, I would have kids I think that would, you know, be okay, but we'll never know, you know? So, uh, way to bring that down. Yeah. <laughs> Sperm doesn't seem to work. I... Yeah. I just, uh... <laughs> I don't know if it's no internet or it just thinks like I Dan do. has AT&T, and AT&T seems like it's even worse than Verizon in this exact location, unfortunately. How, however, in some of their judgments, a really judicious company, I think that... Uh, we love the shows that they buy. Oh, their recent purchase their of the entire now. Turner Network. <laughs> for yes. Uh, yes. Mom, oh. mom, mom. Oh, so well, wonderful. it's the widest network Their in the country. Their aversion to <laughs> headlines about pedophilia, I think, are a fantastic decision. <laughs> I, w I will exchange my fucking life and soul for whatever, wherever they want to go. <laughs> this next tale comes from a man trapped by his plans for retirement. <laughs> in a tale called... Why the fuck is everyone bent out of shape about this? Yeah. Didn't I come to this internet to do exactly this? <laughs> nee, 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 nee. <laughs> um, what, uh, wait, I, 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 why can't I just click on a thing and, I'm not asking That's you guys I want that. to know. It's just, it's just, all right, whatever. Canadian uh, 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 creepypasta. Please tune into creepypasta <laughs> and tell us all good night. <laughs> that is Harmontown. <laughs> Uh, we miss you so much, Jeff Davis, wherever you are. Shout out to Rob Schraub, Spencer Crittenton, Dan Harmon, and the booth, Chris Bora, oh, thank you. Jack McKeever, Sarah Hill. This has been the Dynasty Typewriter. Tuck your keys. Shouts out to church. We love you all. Good night.
did you get any of that? It's a good show.